cells of asthma i am giving a clinical situation suppose a, a person is at home and uh, uh, he or she heard a typical incident of uh, dying of a friend or have seen some road accident and after just coming home suddenly she has uh, getting all those episodes of uh, uh, shortness of breathing difficulty breathing tightness in chest and uh, maybe mucus secretion purulent mucus secretion all those things so and that is it's like uh, it is getting worse and worse means becoming very very severe so that can be asthma basically asthma is a type of respiratory disorder uh, which is basically chronic now what is chronic i hope already you know the basic difference between acute and chronic acute means which one is sudden onset and chronic means which one is uh, staying for a long long time few criteria will be given depending on the disease conditions that bronchial asthma is a chronic inflammatory disorder of the airways so naturally chronic means here the asthma is staying for a long time with the patient so it is a chronic inflammatory disorder now this one is that a uh, normal airway from here we can see that whenever the airway is normal here the passage of um, oxygen and carbon dioxide is really uh, working properly it is working fine but whenever it is getting inflamed because they are saying it's inflammatory so inflammation can occur due to presence of various states of infection it can be viral it can be bacterial or it can be various type of conditions it can be from age it can be from family history it can be from um, environmental situation air pollution depending on the disease condition so now you will know that one but before going to that you will just see that this is the airway that is inflamed due to various states of factor triggering factor and and as this airway has become uh, inflamed so here what will happen naturally you can see the space of air exchange became very very less so naturally there will be a air congestion air uh, there will be a obstruction there will be a air flow limitation and as air flow limitation is there so naturally patient will have a difficulty in breathing patient will have cough patient um, uh, sputum uh, mucus secretion will be there that is why sputum production will be there and uh, not not only that these situations will be failed maybe or these situations can occur these episodes of these situations can occur at the time of night or the time of morning so this is basically bronchial asthma now here we can see that the etiologies are triggering factors which can cause asthma so here basically we can see that allergic in inhalation so there are various types of allergic inhalants which can trigger asthma so it can be like house dust mite pollen smalls etc or second one we can see that air pollutants especially perfume cigarette smoking dust aerosols sprays this kind of thing also can lead to bronchial asthma what else we can see we can see that viral upper respiratory tract infection that can trigger to bronchial asthma next sinusitis that means infection of the sinus can also lead to uh, asthma next you will be able to see exercise sometimes exercise also can trigger asthma then you can see that cold dry air sometimes artificially created cold dry air that is uh, uh, staying for a long time in ac staying um, in the uh, environment of flight airplane that also can lead to asthma next we are able to see stress May maybe you have seen that various situations hero or heroine or some other person due to too much stress suddenly they develop that asthma and for that suddenly another person had to run to get that uh, inhalants or puff or something like that then only that that episode has decreased next one you can see that drugs now use of various types of drugs especially aspirin uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs these type of drugs can also lead to asthma now few more um, etiologies are also there you will see that one also we can see that occupational exposure like if any person is working in a uh, pharmaceutical area pharmaceutical agents can cause um, asthma if they are having this industrial chemicals plastics are there that also can lead to asthma now next we are able to see food additives food additives are uh, like uh, uh, beer wine dried fruit says potatoes sulfides that type of food can also lead to asthma next we are able to see uh, hot hormones uh, hormonal imbalances menstruation can also lead to asthma 
GERD gastroesophageal reflux disease if you if you already studied the disorders from the GI tract or GI system then you already know what GERD is gastroesophageal reflux disease that also can lead to asthma next we are able to see psychologic factors like anger crying laughing those situations can also lead to asthma so these are the etiology or triggering factors that can lead to asthma bronchial asthma now we will see what is the pathophysiology of bronchial asthma so here first we can see that triggers are etiology you always know that pathophysiology starts with the triggering factors or etiology or causes so here same thing is happening and already we know what are the etiology or triggering factors for asthma so from triggers or etiology it is going down to airway inflammation because from the picture you have already seen the normal airway become inflamed so this one is only happening airway inflammation is there now whenever airway inflammation is there we are able to see various types of things will happen to airways so first one is hyper secretion of mucus whenever the airway will become inflamed that time body will try to get rid of so and that is why they will create a lot of mucus so naturally we will be able to see in this bronchial asthma hyper secretion of mucus next one you will see airway muscle constriction that airway muscle constriction will be there and uh, next one swelling of bronchial membranes there will be swelling in the bronchial membrane these three things lead to narrow breathing passages so you have seen from the picture that the breathing passage become very very narrow so there is a airflow limitation kind of obstruction is there and after that you will be able to see various types of clinical manifestations patient will produce wheezing that can be at the time of inspiration that can be at the time of expiration what else we are able to see patient will have a lot of cough and when the disease will progress along with cough patient will produce a lot of sput Sputum, uh, sputum production will be there and SOB, SOB the full form is shortness of breathing, patient will have a shortness of breathing, after that you will be able to see tightness in chest. Now these episodes, uh, the, these clinical manifestations we are able to see, these are basically kind of episode patient will produce and that can last from few minutes to few hours also depending on the availability of the treatment and not only that whenever the disease condition will stay and progress we will see that these inspiration and expiration ratio will become as 1 is to 2 or sometimes 1 is to 3 or 1 is to 4 that means this expiration period uh, increases at the time of expiration the time is usually longer than inspiration so these are the type of clinical manifestation patient will produce so from here only we are able to see what are the clinical manifestations of bronchial asthma now not only that many more clinical manifestations they will be able to see whenever the disease will progress like hypoxemia we will be able to see we will be able to see that diminished breath sounds are there we will be able to see that patient will produce various types of other features as well like in pneumothorax like atelectasis so now we will proceed to another one point that is diagnostic test um, in diagnostic studies you will see that um, that history collection and physical examination should be done properly because to identify the triggering factors for the patient to um, find out the cause of the asthma for that patient because uh, finding out triggering cause is really very important to treat asthma now that is why history taking should be done carefully and after that physical examination should be done to find out the signs and symptoms patients are having. Next we will see pulmonary function test. Pulmonary function test is really very important for asthma. We will see peak expiratory flow rate. After that we will see chest x-ray. Then blood levels of eosinophil and IgE. After that we will see arterial blood gas test. Next we will see pulse oximetry then you will see allergy scheme testing if indicated and this one also this blood levels of eosinophil and IgE if indicated after that we are able to see treatment what are the treatment for bronchial asthma so first of all we can see that tre uh, uh, treatment is first treatment is to identify the triggers of the asthma or uh, identify the causes which are creating uh, the asthma to the patients which is creating the episodes of asthma to the patient so first one find out the triggers and then avoid the triggers after that 
patient may have immunotherapy or desensitization then patient will have saturation of oxygen monitoring then uh, inhaled beta 2 agonist or anticholinergic agents can be given to the patient uh, and please uh, please keep in mind that one is inhaled after that oxygen should be given by mask because already we know that there is a shortness of breathing difficulty breathing and there is airflow limitation so patient is not getting oxygen mask that is why oxygen should be given by mask now nasal prongs can be given but mask is preferable to give at least four to five liters of oxygen so next we are able to see IVR oral corticosteroids now corticosteroids are really very important for long term maintenance in bronchial asthma next we are able to see IV magnesium the patients are having uh, moderate persistent asthma or severe persistent asthma and if that situation lead to respiratory failure that time intubation can be done then with intubation and assisted ventilation can be done so those things are coming under the treatment now we will see the draft chart quick relief medication so you are able to see bronchodilators short acting inhaled beta 2 adrenergic agonist anticholinergics or anticholinergic agents anti-inflammatory drugs and corticosteroids those drugs can relieve the episodes of asthma very quickly then we are able to see long-term medications in long-term medications we are able to see anti-inflammatory agents those are basically hydrocortisone uh, then methylprednisolone then fluticasone then mast cell stabilizers we are able to see tromoline then leukotriene modifiers we are able to see uh, Montelukast maybe you have heard the name of Montelukast next we are able to see IgE antagonist IgE antagonist Omalizumab next we are able to see long acting inhaled beta 2 adrenergic agonist uh, that is Salmeterol and one drug uh, another one drug we are able to see long acting oral whenever inhaled uh, drug is not enough for the patient that time oral beta 2 adrenergic agonist drug can be given to the patient next one we are able to see theophylline so these are the drugs that can be given to a patient with bronchial asthma for the maintenance of the disease condition now we will see the classification of bronchial asthma here four types of um, four types of asthma is there in this classification so the first one is mild intermittent mild intermittent mild persistent moderate persistent severe persistent so depending on this classification of asthma patient is getting medication status asthmaticus now what is status asthmaticus status asthmaticus is a complication of bronchial asthma which is very severe and life threatening and which is really very refractory to treatment and sometimes it can lead to death of the patient that means patient are at the risk of death hope you understood bronchial asthma bronchial asthma etiology or triggering factors then pathophysiology clinical manifestation classification complication drug therapy or uh, then diagnostic test treatment especially the drug therapy including that um, quick relief medications and long-term medications so thank you for watching and don't forget to like comment and share this video with your friends and obviously subscribe to get this type of videos thank you